A junior web developer from Venezuela needs a remote dev job. Can he make it happen? Let's talk about it today. The video starts right now. Real Tough Candy from RealToughCandy.com back online with you guys today. A developer named Robert reached out to me on Twitter and said, Hi, I need a little help. I'm desperate for a remote job. My skills are HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and React. Why a remote job? I'm from Venezuela. The idea of earning in my currency is not a smart idea. The Bolivar is worth nothing. With this in mind, is there any way to find a job from my position? Where can I look for a job? Or what resources do I have to find a job? Any tip or help will be appreciated. I just need to know what to do. This is one of the toughest questions someone's ever thrown at me. Let's just get the bad news out of the way. There aren't a lot of companies out there that are willing to take a risk on a junior developer via a remote position. And generally speaking, their skills are just not up there to engage in a remote job, um, version control, working without a supervisor, so on and so forth. So with that out of the way, I think there are a few different things you can try. All hope is not lost, not by a long shot. There's definitely some avenues you can try. Uh, I did ask if he has a portfolio and he said he does. Obviously you have a Twitter account. One of the first things I would do post on Twitter. I did a video about this the other day as an example. This woman named Victoria said she's looking for a new team to join as a front-end dev advocate, remote friendly. She has two years of experience, but look at these retweets and these likes and these comments. 446 retweets. And in your situation, I just be honest and upfront. I'm a junior developer looking for a remote position. You might even want to add that you do live in Venezuela and do add that the Bolivar is worth nothing, that your country is in a rough spot right now. Some people may think this sounds gimmicky, but I'm telling you, the numbers don't lie. People engage in this stuff. I see these postings all the time and I see the follow-ups. Twitter searching for jobs does work and there may be a company that sees you, that sees your work, that sees your situation and is willing to take that chance on you. One of the best things about Twitter outreach also is that it's totally free. People are addicted to Twitter for better or worse and they're going to see your message. Try to throw in a few hashtags, throw in a link to your portfolio, uh, you know, sell yourself. If you're trying to get a remote position as a junior dev, you really have to sell yourself. What qualities do you have? What is in your portfolio that will make a company say, and it just has to be one company, just has to be one company willing to take a chance on you for them to say, you know, Robert's portfolio was absolute fire. His portfolio is one big fat 100% A+. And the more you engage with people, not just on Twitter, but with any type of social media outside of your country, um, especially in North America, they're going to see your English skills too. You know, I read this and I thought you were a native English speaker and you might be, but if English is your second language, I couldn't even tell. If you're a worker outside of North America and English is your second language, most companies do see that as just another hurdle, but your communication with me was, you know, I couldn't even tell that you were from outside of America. So that's just one less hurdle to deal with. You may be tempted to go to a job board like indeed.com and search for react developers, remote positions. I would not waste your time with these. This is going to be one big time sink. You could spend 40, 50 hours a week um, doing this stuff. But as I mentioned earlier, these companies are going to shut their door on that prospect. Unfortunately, with most of these companies, it's just going to be a time sink. And absolutely, you can try it. But once you get sucked into the job board mill, you're just like churning out all these resumes and applications. You might find yourself coming back here and trying more like, OK, what am I doing wrong? Just got to improve my resume. But it does have to do with factors that are out of your control. It's not about, oh, I forgot to dot this I on my resume. It involves bigger factors that unfortunately companies just aren't willing to entertain in a lot of situations. So I do think outreach to people, reaching out to people, communicating with people rather than just an automated program in the human resources department using the Indeed job board or something similar is a better way to go with this. The other idea I had for you was to just ditch the nine to five thing and instead focus on freelancing. If you have any friends or acquaintances outside of Venezuela, even in a neighboring country, hit them up and ask them if they need web work. Freelancing can be very lucrative. It's very easy to start once you have the skills. And you said you're down here, you already know the basics plus React. If your friends outside of Venezuela don't need web services, ask them if they know anybody who needs a website. And the thing is, consistency is key. Don't just ask once and move on, but follow up with your friends and your acquaintances and ask them if they know anybody 
somebody or hey, anything changed with that lead from last week? What's the deal? Just be very, very proactive and very consistent. Now, under normal circumstances, I do not recommend developers use Upwork because it is usually a race to the bottom, especially if you live in North America. You just never earn enough to even pay for your basic utilities. But in Robert's case, this may be something you want to investigate. It may take a few months for you to get up and running and get your feedback going on this site or something similar, but it is an option. I'm not necessarily recommending Upwork.com, but it is an option. And it could be something that ends up being really fruitful for you if you end up getting a few clients outside of your country. So the first step I would take if I was in your position, number one, hit social media, Twitter in particular. Even if you don't like being on the site, that's where the techies are. That's where the tech talent is. They're always on, they're very connected. People are gonna retweet and somebody might see this and be willing to give you a chance. If you're on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn is another good one. Reaching out and being proactive. I just think the traditional method of dumping off a resume in a portfolio at these job board sites is not gonna help you. It's gonna be a waste of time. So you wanna focus on the low hanging fruit. So if anyone's watching this video and you have a lead, please leave it in the YouTube comments. Please share this video on your own social media if you're watching this. And Robert, if you're watching this video, put your portfolio link in the comment section and maybe even your resume so people can check them out right from this video. I've seen it happen dozens of times before where this tech community helps other developers out. So I hope this video gave you some motivation. The big key here is to stay motivated and don't give up and be consistent. I've seen a lot of people just try something once and then give up because they thought it was a failure. It's just that you gotta keep trying, you gotta be more consistent and you're gonna see some results. Someone or something is gonna come out of the woodwork. You just have to be consistent. I wanted to do this as a video rather than reply to him directly because I feel like there are other people in his situation, not necessarily in Venezuela, but maybe around the world, just needing a little bit of guidance on where to get started. So if you enjoyed this video please share it please give a thumbs up leave a comment if you have a lead leave it in the comments thanks guys for watching as always i hope you're having a wonderful day and i'll see you in the next video